uh, so The Hidden Life of Trees um, is written by Peter Vuobin, who's a German forester. Um, and this book was published in 2015. Um, and I wanted to focus on it because it, it really opened my mind to uh, a lot of things I didn't really know about trees and the world in general. Um, and they have such a slow paced world where their life is heavily dependent upon each other. And I feel like that is a lot like us. So I'm going to talk about four different topics and then um, I have a little takeaway from each one. So the first one is friendship. Um, this book starts out with Peter describing a circle of rocks that he found in the forest. Uh, and he thought that it was like a dead old tree, but he soon discovered that it was still alive. Um, and this was without photosynthesis, um, and it had the interior had rotted away four to 500 years ago. So he just asked, like, how could this be? Um, and it turns out that the trees around it were pumping sugars through their connected root system, and it kept it alive for hundreds of years. Um, so it's just saying that together uh, many trees create an e ecosystem one tree is not a forest um, so staying close together means that the canopy gaps that were in the trees um, would be less and storms couldn't uproot the trees or the heat of summer couldn't dry the forest floor out um, and trees like those we're keeping their friends alive through that root system uh, to provide nutrients to each other and communicate. So apparently plants and trees are able to distinguish their roots from other trees and then they can connect to each other when they're in the same um, species. So they kind of seem to be social beings. And sometimes they can be friends forever, which is really cute. Um, and growing up, a pair of trees won't grow overly thick branches towards the other's direction so that they don't take away sun or light. Um, and sometimes they're so closely knit at their roots that they'll die together. So, the takeaway is that the stronger relationships that we have, um, the more storms that we can weather together. So if you're working against any team member, you're working against the whole group, so it takes a whole ecosystem and strong bonds to solve real problems. And the second theme is communication. Um, these trees, they communicate su through super slow signals. It's like the whole slow animation. <laughs> um, but the, this method can only go so far. Um, oh wait, did I miss something? Did I skip a slide? Oh, wait, okay, sorry. Oh, no. I'm going to have to go back. <laughs> well, anyway, I'll just go through it. Basically, there was some trees that, um, other than just communicating through electrical signals, which I'll get into in just a minute, they um, were able to send out, like, a scent. So if some giraffes were chewing on their leaves, they'd send out the scent, and trees downwind could, like, figure that out and then change their leaves to be more bitter so that the giraffes wouldn't want to eat them, which is kind of crazy. Um, so that's one way they communicate, but this other way is through the signals that are through the roots, and they're actually through um, a series of fungi that's at the roots' tips, so it allows them to send little signals to each other um, so if there's something wrong, then they can let them know. Um, so going back to the trees that couldn't smell the gas, that's how they could connect to each other. Um, well let's see. And even er if there were some loner trees that were not directly connected to the roots, they were still able to receive a message through the fungi. So. <laughs> so <laughs> communication within the actual tree and not to each other is also pretty fascinating. They use the same um, method of communication, and it allows the tree to defend itself depending on the risk at hand or the task at hand. Some trees can produce different, different chemical compounds um, for a predator based on its saliva, so they can release pheromones that attract beneficial insects that will devour the tree's enemies. Um, so they can kind of taste and smell, and there's even some current research that suggests they can communicate through sound waves, but that's not totally official. So the takeaway here is any or slow communication is better than no communication. <laughs> So <laughs> you, can, you can tell your whole team when something's wrong, so that way there's no one that's left out that could help solve the problem. All right. Um, oh, yeah, and so I think what I missed is 
can they the electrical impulses are sent at a third of an inch per minute um, is how fast it is it's, it's really slow so they they have a lot of patience when they're growing um, young trees can start their lives under a canopy of their caretakers and they can wait hundreds of years to really start growing um, due to the lack of light from the canopy so when a mother tree is knocked down on the ground by a storm or an insect invades it and starts it to rot uh, this can clear a gap in the canopy and the trees can finally start to shoot up over a period of years but they'll only be shadowed again by their older expanding trees so they have to be patient so they just wait some more slowly does it um, they rely on the surrounding trees to provide the nutrients through those connected root systems and maybe produce a bit of their own light if they were able to grow some trees to photosynthesize. And so this process is a really slow one and they're at a pace that we can only imagine. Some trees can live up to thousands of years and the oldest one is 5,062 years old, which is crazy. So, um, and there's no guarantee that even throughout that amount of time that they're gonna survive. So many things can contribute to the tree's death um, some can even be slow and painful. If a piece of bark gets torn off, it can take years to heal. And within that time, fungi or insects can invade and kill it. Um, so it's a long game for survival. And let's see, they're able to withstand based on chance and effort that they create the wonderful forest that we have today. So it's something we shouldn't take for granted. And the main takeaway is that growth takes patience. Um, looking at time through a larger perspective can allow us to take a step back and release some of our problems that seem to be immediate. Uh, we're always growing, but maybe not at the rate that we wish. And last but not least, memory. Um, so this one's a little off but, and weird, but I feel like it's pretty important. Um, and also just a new thought is that these trees will shed their leaves and grow new ones based on temperature. Um, but also on the number of days that that temperature remains consistent. Um, so one ex example that Peter cites is the beech tree. They don't start growing unless it's light for at least 13 hours a day. So it seems they have some kind of memory. And they, it seems they have a sense of time. Um, the rising temperatures mean it's spring, while fall indicates fall. The falling temperatures indicate fall. And for if a little seedling reaches the ground in the fall, it still will wait till spring to start growing. Um, and some trees can go through warm spells in January and not green up. And they just wait to make sure that there's enough warm days before they start to grow new leaves. It seems they kind of have brains. I know that's a stretch. Um, but it's, it's like our ability to learn and grow based on memory. Um, so they have to store that information somewhere. It's, it helps them survive and keep surviving and help our forests stay alive for hundreds of years. And our memory, memory functions, just like trees and plants, is that they learn to adapt to the world around them. And we, let's see, I know it's quite a stretch, but there's a lot that we take for granted of the world and we don't know, so you never know. Um, but just to think that they're living and can memorize the way that we do is pretty fascinating. So the main takeaway on this is remember that the world around you is not yours only. Um, we all share the space and lives with each other. We don't know what the world always holds, but we can focus on making it a better place. And we are pretty small in the grand scheme of life around us, which hopefully gives you a little more freedom to let the little things go and enjoy the life that you have. And that is it. <laughs>